Hey everybody, welcome. Just getting set up here. Starting to stream a little early. There we go. All right, now I can see your comments while we do this. So today we're gonna be drawing some architecture. Before I get started though, I'm just gonna do some quick warm-ups. A little rusty, you wanna, wanna shake, shake it off a little bit. Working on, on architecture requires some, some nice, reasonably straight lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kinda do some warm-ups on some lines. Even people like me do warm-ups and practices. Just trying to get those nice, predictable lines. You know, a lot about doing a good sketch is just knowing what lines you can make and, and how you can predictably do them. You know, I, I think if you can predictably place your lines, well then you can sketch a little bit more freely. All right, feeling pretty good about, about those straight lines. I'm gonna use a little bit of a, a tool as well, this clear triangle just to tighten things up when we get a little bit further into the process. Whoops, the camera cable sticking out there. Let's get that out of your way. And I think just to, to warm up my perspective, I'm just gonna do a quick, quick little perspective warm up here. Just throw down a horizon line. Couple vanishing points. Gonna start pulling up a few cubes in space here. Again, just kind of warming up. Nothing wrong with warming up a little bit. Especially on a Saturday. Just finished up my coffee. Saturday morning. We'll warm up just a little bit before we get into it. So you'll notice I'm sketching with a Sharpie as I usually do. And you know, one, I like sketching with Sharpies, but two, I, I do that just so, you know, when we're doing videos like this, you all can more easily see what I'm doing. So don't feel like you have to use something this bold to sketch with. But I do prefer sketching with something that cannot erase. You know, I, I think it's important to, to commit and um, you know, you're gonna make mistakes and I think it's just all how you work those mistakes into the drawing. Just kind of keep it loose. too much about things being perfect because you know what they never are nothing's perfect I remember one of my professors in uh, in design school in the 90s when I asked about oh, how do you draw a perfect straight line and he was like well, Michael there there are no straight lines in reality nothing is perfectly straight I guess that's what design school professors are supposed to do, right? They're supposed to blow your mind a little bit with uh, some of those matrix, uh, what if I told you there is no spoon type things. All right, I'm feeling pretty decent about my, my two point perspective warm up here. I'm just trying to you know, I've got this horizon line and these vanishing points. So we got VP1, vanishing point two. And I'm just trying to practice getting some things in perspective. 
you know, when you're doing a, a product sketch, the perspective can be a little bit looser. Usually it's a smaller thing. So the perspective isn't so extreme. But when you're doing architecture, when everything is so linear and there's so many details like windows and trim, if the perspective is wonky, it gets a little, becomes, it becomes painfully obvious very quickly. And you'll notice I kind of come back into these, these uh, rectangles in space and I just hit that, tend to hit the outer edges of them with a little bit of a darker line weight. I've got a nice video all about line weights, but just a quick rule of thumb there is like, if you can, if you can reach your hand around it, that becomes a, uh, that becomes a, an, an area where you want to use a little bit of a heavier line weight. Oh, hey, Tim Lyles, thanks for joining. All right. Now that I've procrastinated a little bit with these warm ups, I think we gotta figure out what we're gonna draw here. So usually when I'm working on architectural sketch, I mean, sure, you could just plow into drawing a house, um, but I like to think a little bit of the floor plan first. Uh, I'm not an architect, but it seems like that's what you probably do if you're an architect. So, and I'm just gonna block in a really quick floor plan to use as my my guide for when I do the perspective sketch. So thinking this is kind of like, thinking of this as the main living area, I tend to think of it in kind of like quadrants. So if you came into the house, let's say here, and this was kind of the, the living area, maybe there'd be some kind of an island, kitchen here, and a living dining. And then I'm gonna put a a garage off to this side. Something like that for two car garage. And then I'm gonna start estimating in where an upper level might be. So I'm gonna have this upper level be out a little bit further than a lower level. Let's say our bedrooms are up there. Let's really notch out this entryway. I like it when entryways are a little bit recessed makes them feel a little bit protected from the street. Maybe that, that living room kind of notches out. We could get some kind of a fireplace here. We probably need a bathroom somewhere on the first floor. A little rear entryway. Probably have to put stairwell going up to stairs somewhere here. So let's put that through here. I'm just gonna use that as my rough floor plan. I'm gonna start by just doing a really quick elevation of that too before I get into the perspective, just so I know what I'm drawing. So we have this, this first floor block here. I'm just gonna, gonna telegraph that up. So that's our first floor. And then, you know, the entryway is a little bit recessed, so we're gonna have a line here. And then this is the living room. So this might be you know, a nice bank of windows I'm gonna make them a little bit, those windows a little bit on the high side. And we've got our entry door. And then maybe that door also has a nice side light. It's gonna have a fluted glass thing there. And maybe, maybe let's make this floor plan a little bit, uh, or this elevation have some different heights. So maybe garage is actually just a little bit up higher. So this first floor is just a little bit sunken. So we have our garage there. And then remember our, our second story is gonna be protruding a little bit. second story is nice and high. Let's push this up a little bit. Maybe the garage comes down a little bit. And maybe this is actually a little kind of outdoor area on top of the garage. And we could get kind of a sloped roof that 
covers the outdoor area a little bit. Just kind of working this out as I go. It's okay to be a little bit messy because we're, this is just going to be a, this is just going to be a little bit of a, a sketch to keep off to the side as I do my perspective. scale and then let's get some some windows up here on the second level so maybe this would be a nice main bedroom here all right I'm gonna use that as just kind of the, the guide as I do my sketch put this over here so Thinking about how I want to lay this out, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the horizon line basically kind of at the top of this garage here. Maybe I'm gonna carry that like that um, just to make our sketch a little bit simpler and then everything below that horizon line will be kind of tapering this way and everything above will be tapering perspective the other way. So let's kind of lay that out really roughly. This is just gonna be a rough underlay getting that horizon line in. I'm gonna have my vanishing points, they were not gonna be on the page, so I don't want the perspective to be so forced. So conceptually, my, my vanishing points are gonna be way, way off the page. Um, and I kind of do that in my head, you know, for, for if you're beginning, it might be sometimes um, you could put like a little piece of tape and a dot on your desk and then conceptually kind of make the lines go that way. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. So let's see here. Let's get our, our garage in there because that's kind of a little bit in the foreground. Remember in our plan, we have that protruding a little bit. So let's see, that's, that's going to act as our, our garage there. And then we've got the second level, which is somewhat flush with the garage. But let's make that actually come forward a little bit more. I hate when houses are flat. Just seems kind of lazy. So this roof is sloping, right? So first I'm gonna draw, draw it as a perfect kind of rectangle in space, tapering out. Just again, so I can get the hang of it. This is a little trick I use where I'll just kind of do this, do this, about at the right dimension there. But remember, I have that going upwards. A little bit tricky in perspective because it's already tapering in that direction. So that slope has actually got to be more like that. And it comes out over that garage area. that's gonna end up being something like that. And this is super rough, right? Maybe this is just slightly recessed from that roof edge there so we get a little overhang again. And now this, this living room area that we have here, slightly recessed from the garage and then the entryway slightly recessed from that, right? So kind of recess that a little bit. Recess it again. Maybe this is a little bit more like that. And that is like that. And that is not bad. Start to a perspective underlay. Let's get some some railings here for hanging out. of our garage door. We've got little high windows here on the garage side that wraps around to the back. We had 
I have a big bank of windows here for the living room. And then our front door was here with side light. Maybe I want this actually, this window here to wrap the edge. Yeah, I think that'd be nice. So this window would be kind of doing that. And then probably get a nice bank of sliding doors over here. It's a little bit high for probably how tall that should be. And then we had another window here. I think our second story is probably a little tall compared to the first story, but just kind of run with it for now. Actually, if I'm looking at my elevation, this was supposed to protrude downward a little bit. That's why it's doing like that. So we had this as a slope. And that's gonna come down like that. That was my mistake. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then what else am I gonna put in here? So we have this kind of driveway coming down. Say we have some, there's this elevation change here. So a few stairs. Now let's have a path that comes out. Yeah, okay. And just thinking of our scene that's in the underlay here. So I'm gonna get a little tree in the background. I have a little happy tree, right? Okay, that's gonna be the overall layout for my sketch. So now that I've got this really rough layout, I'm gonna drop this underneath. Get that a little bit lower on the page. Okay, so I've got my underlay here, right? Now I can start coming in with a straight edge and blocking it out but I'm gonna keep it pretty loose with a straight edge. So, you know, just because you're using a, a drawing tool doesn't mean that you gotta get tight with the drawing. It can still be loose and sketchy. You know, we just wanna show people the idea for this house. This is a, a concept. You know, I don't want it to be too tight. So I notice I'm kind of doing, I'm almost doing two lines with every line, and that is just helping me keep that kind of nice, sketchy feel to it. And I don't need to use the straight edge everywhere. You know, I just need to, to help me get in the right spot in some places. Up, that's okay. If you got any questions or anything as I go, feel free to lay it down in the chat. Be happy to kind of answer questions as I go here. So now we got that kind of nicely blocked in. Probably don't need my straight edge for much more. You know, now I think I could probably just trust myself to do most of that. Cause I still have my, still have my nice underlay underneath, right? And I don't want it to get too tight looking. So I'm gonna block in a 
this nice big corner window here. And then we had you know, our sliding doors here. And then maybe we'll leave that for some side lights. I wanna put some, some glazing in. I don't think this would just be a giant pane of glass. So I'm just gonna simulate where some glazing might go. Some frameworks for the windows. Then we had this kind of longer window here. Something like that. We had this nice big living room window here. Maybe I'll just split that in half. And then we had our front door nicely sunken in here. I put some glass on that front door. And then I'm a big fan of a side, like a fluted side light on the door just to let some light in there. start developing the garage door. I don't, I don't like, I don't, yeah, again, I don't like when, when facades are too flat. So we've got some nice kind of in and out here, but we can even do some more in and out within that. So maybe we'll set that garage door back a little bit. of some glass in the garage door itself. And then I'm just gonna put up a very high window back here. That way, thinking of the garage, there could be storage below here. Maybe you don't want people just kind of looking in at all your stuff, but we've still got a lot of nice room for light to come in. Just showing that kind of wraps the corner there. And then we've got to add our railings in here. So if this is a, a nice little area to hang out. I don't want people falling off. I'm just gonna indicate those, you know, not gonna to go too crazy with them. Don't need to go too detailed. Okay, I'm gonna get a slightly finer pen still a sharpie here but I want to add some some more detailed stuff let's see I'm just gonna get one of these fine point sharpies and I'm gonna start kind of indicating um, maybe the different surface materials here so let's say that this is siding that's going horizontally One of the things I love to do also to kind of show off these different dimensions of, of the facade is to make them different materials. So I'm gonna do some horizontal siding here, but here I'm gonna make it vertical. Andreas Schultz wants to know I'm working on marker paper right now. No, I'm just using really cheap um, printer paper. It's kind of like my favorite thing to draw on, to be honest. I don't like when things feel too precious. And sometimes when I use marker paper, you're like, oh, this paper is expensive, right? And so you freeze up a little bit. So showing maybe this is a, a stucco kind of second story here. Again, just kind of dimensionalizing different parts. I'm gonna bring that stucco down here. And then maybe I'm actually gonna break that stucco facade here. So I'm gonna have the stucco, or it could be cast cement, but probably would be stucco. It'd be pretty cool if it was poured in place cement though. And then I'm gonna go back to my, my horizontal siding here. And 
And then remember we had this little bit of an elevation change here in the driveway. And then we had this pathway coming from the front door over to the driveway. I'm just kind of indicating that. They're stone, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, that's kind of the thing about it. I want to have a little bit of fun with this stuff. And I think sometimes just kind of making it a little imperfect makes it a little more relatable, a little more fun. So we've got a horizon line back here. And then we had a, a little bit of a tree in the background. Let's kind of break it up here. Probably we wouldn't want a tree that close to the house, but you know, we're just showing it off for, for funsies, for scale. Usually like to add some people walking up the path too. Again, adds a little scale, adds a little bit of a human element. So I was gonna roughly sketch in a person here, real, real loose. You don't need too much. Let's make it a, a parent and a kid. walking up the pathway. And then maybe the underside of, um, of this roof structure here is actually wood. I think that would be pretty cool. Let's, uh, Show our tree off a little here. They're drawing all those straight lines in architecture. Fun to throw in some, some leaves and some organic things, tree stuff. Okay. And I like to kind of frame the sketch a little bit on the page so, you know, these lines just don't go nowhere. What I'll do is I'll pull this driveway line out and then I've got this horizon line here. I'm just gonna make that end. So now I've got a nice little block there. I'm gonna do the same here. I had this horizon line. I'm gonna bring that down the side of the page. Again, my driveway here. Nice just kind of finishes it a little bit, makes it sit on the page a little better. Okay. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to this. We don't have to go nuts on it. You know, just wanna show, again, show off the sketch. Yeah, so. I haven't thought too much about color on this thing yet. Pull some markers out here. Maybe I'll, you know what? I'm gonna go to my underlay. So I could play with color a little bit on my underlay to see what I wanna do here. So I had this as, as wood siding, this is wood siding, this was stucco. So maybe I'll do some of this on the wood sided areas. And then I had some, some wood on the bottom of this. So maybe I'll kind of go with that as a brown, just a natural wood. Yeah, okay, I think that'd be kind of nice. Let's make that pop off. And then I had this kind of inset here on the garage. Okay, always testing things out, you know, that way you don't, you don't screw up so much if you, if you test things out and, and just play with it a little first. So I'm gonna use this periwinkle blue for all of these horizontal sided areas. And, you know, I'm using the marker kind of fast so that I get this little bit of that kind of dryness there. I want that. It helps me to almost show that I got a light gradation on it and then I'm coming back in 
and hitting that those sided areas. They want to show off that they're siding there, right? Okay, and we've got the same here. So how I do that is just kind of put the tip of the marker down and then draw it out really fast. And that gives me that little bit of that gradation. Coming back in with the tip. And I'm gonna do the same here. So this is inset, right? So this second story is an overhang. So I want to show that there'd be a little bit of a shadow there. See that? Uh, how that pushed that dark line here just kind of pushed that back, didn't it? I might use this. I'm a big fan of a bright door about using this spearmint on this door here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna think about it. Let me think about that. I'm not gonna do it right now. But I know I wanted to do this kind of wood surface here. And you know what? I messed up because I didn't have that wood come down here. So you'd see this, right? Okay. So that I know I want to do. overhang there so with a little bit of a shadow use the, the very tip of the marker to, to show off the little wood planks I'm gonna do the same on this one a little bit trickier because it's on such an angle keep it loose do my best Now we're really starting to show off what's going on here. You know, we get this, we got this little inset for the garage, pull that off to some wood. Okay, it's start, starting to get somewhere. The thing we're gonna do on the window areas is just coming in with, Let's not start with 90. Start with 50% there, see how that looks. So just showing off our window areas. around this side here maybe the, the lights coming from this way let's say yeah that's much better all right guys this will dry let's try this one out Trying to take shape. Just blocking these windows in real loose. Don't want to get too fussy. Uh, Austin asked who the client would be. 
for these types of sketches. So I'm not an architect and I'm an industrial designer, but I have done some architectural work. Uh, in the past when I've been doing that work, I've been working for a developer actually. So that's who my client has been. But yeah, if you're an architect, this might be a, a sketch that you'd be showing to who your client would be. Just hinting at a little bit of depth in these windows here. Need some, some darker color on these sides. I want to show that off a little. Yeah, now it's starting to turn the corner a little more. Going back in, kind of darkening up some of these outer edges like I did in my warm-ups. That just helps it to pop off the page a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same darken this up because this is a nice overhang, right? Matthew uh, Henke says, looking good. Thanks, Matthew, appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Yeah, see, so now it's starting to have a little bit of depth. So I have this either cast concrete or stucco here. I'm gonna just take a 20% gray. Just wanna show off where that's kind of turning the corner. So I'm gonna let the front just be white and then the side will be in shadow a little bit. Same on that roof turn there. Mm -mm, I don't know, I want that to be stucco. Maybe, maybe I want that wood to kind of turn into there. I think that would kind of make sense. Yeah, I think that would be, that'd be interesting. Darken that up because that's in the shadow there. And maybe you want actually just a nice bright orange door. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I want the garage door to be orange. I don't know, no going back from that, but let's do it. All the doorways would be orange. So since I decided this side would be kind of in shadow, I'm just gonna come back with that same periwinkle. Bring up this side just a little bit more. side of that siding. And this is why those, you know, you're like, why, why are those warm-up lines important? Why do those warm-up lines? This is this why. You know, it's that way we can do this really nice and clean. Shadow there on the overhang. I know I said that was going to be glass too. It's 
come back with that 50%. Hit that little bit of glass there. And then just a little bit of 80. And now I'm gonna come back in, because I, I had kind of defined this area, right? So I'm gonna um, come back in with this spearmint and just just hit our tree here real quick. Again, just moving really fast with the marker so that I can get it to be kind of streaky. I want it to be nice and loose. And then remember our light source is coming from, from this way. So this part of the tree being a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna kind of develop a little bit of a shadow line there come back in a little bit slower so I can get a little more ink out of the marker. Look how so easily we can give that tree a little bit of dimension without really doing much. Sometimes you want to I'm gonna use the markers almost like watercolor sometimes. I'm gonna use that same brown for the tree trunk here. And we're doing a nice little, you know, a conceptual tie, right? Between this wood and this is wood, you're telling that story. And then to come back with the green here. some kind of a grass or whatever. Want some grass between this these stones on the path. Just gonna give a little bit of a darker outline here with that elevation change. Don't be afraid to turn your page. You know, I think that's, again, know, know what lines you can easily replicate. It's harder for me to go or like into that, that vertical kind of a space with the lines. So turn the page horizontally so that I can more easily do this. That makes sense? Hey Jackson, well, thanks for joining. Again, you're gonna come with that little bit of darker around the edge there. And then again, remember the light coming this way. We kind of played our shadow a little bit that way. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a shadow from the house itself. A little bit of a shadow from the tree. Not gonna go too crazy there. I think I need a little bit of a darker on that side surface. Just gonna hit that really lightly with this 50%. Yeah, maybe I wanna dull down this blue just a little bit too and go over it with the 50. showing that this front surface is some kind of a cast or stucco. Probably shouldn't have done the stippling with the, with the uh, fine point Sharpie, but that's okay. Okay. I could, if I wanted to, overlay this yet again to make it even cleaner, but won't bore you all with that step. Maybe we got a hint of some, uh, some stratus clouds here, just, just indicating. I'm gonna do the same kind of a block here with the 
clouds. Just so they, the lines seem to go somewhere. To some of this with a white pencil just to help bring some of the things to the foreground so we sharpen up a white pencil sorry for the loud noise here in a second okay so I want to show this this corner a little bit more crisply My friend uh, Jeff Smith once told me you should spend as much time with the white pencil as you do with the black lines. And uh, the first time he told me that, I thought that was a little, little nuts. It's a lot of time, but actually it's kind of right. The more, the more time I started doing that, the more the sketches seemed to just kind of pop off the page a little bit more. show off some of these lines in the siding. That's yeah, giving a little bit more life there. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask me in the comments. I'll try to get to them. Sometimes the marker dulls the sharpie just a little bit too, so I'll come back in and just kind of tighten some of these things up. You know, maybe you want to loosen this line up a little bit. You know, we're, we're showing that there's, there's grass here, so it's going to loosen up that lower line. Close to done. You know what? Maybe this trim is a little bit out and this is a little bit back. Push that just a little bit. I was just kind of modifying as I go here. as we go. 
At least trying to. and sketchy. It's that shat ground shadow. I'm playing that up a little more. Add a few more leaves in here, maybe. Just some leaves at the kind of the shadow line there. up on this balcony. Again, just sketching them in nice and loose. You don't have to do too much for someone to be like, oh yeah, that's a person. Could probably be a, a little bit taller than that, but close enough. I feel like this wood just needs a little extra dimensionality. Let's see what this color's like. back in just to, that wood is looking a little flat for me this is a really old prisma so it's pretty dry but it's kind of what I'm going for pulled this out of the way back of the drawer Gives a little bit more life to that wood area, which I like. Bring it into the tree trunk too. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Elon. Appreciate that. I like dropped a little bit of alcohol from my marker there, but. You know, it's gonna have to work it in. Stuff happens. Just gotta roll with it. Use it as an opportunity to darken up this blue a little bit. going back over that spearmint with these lines makes it look a little more more grassy just doing that nice and loosely come back over here and do it a 
Yeah, let's make it a little more sketchy too, which I like. Turn this sideways again. Matt, Matthew asked if I live stream more often. I'm gonna try to, especially over the holidays here. So just wrapped up a few projects, couple clients going on holiday break. For whatever reason, the last few years, the way it's lined up, we've had big projects due the first week of January. So the holiday has been a little bit crazy, but this year we have actually have a little bit of a break. So I will try, I will try my best to live stream a little bit more over the holidays and maybe I can make it a habit. I kind of like that now. I actually like that. That little mess up made me do this and it just, I feel like it pops a little more. Should I do it in the tree? Let's do it. Well, thanks everybody for for joining me on this. Probably other things you could have been doing on your Saturday. But then again, maybe not right now, so maybe this is as good as anything else. Gives you a little bit of sense of how long he sketches too. So this has been going on for about an hour. So, you know, these things don't just happen like in two seconds, you know, it, take, it takes time to do a sketch, especially one you're proud of. Let's say maybe there's a little bit of a reflection through here, like that. This is add a little bit of depth. Pretty much done. Sign it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. Andreas Schultz, always interesting to see how things work. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Think about sketches. You, you kind of at some point you gotta call it, you know? You gotta be like, I'm done now. But sometimes I come back, I'll do a sketch and come back the next day and I'll see everything that's wrong with it. I'm sure some of you had that feeling too. Or maybe just at least see a few ways I can make it better. Like, oh, why didn't I? add more contrast there or more light there. I think I had to do it over. I'd add something else orange over here, maybe on the side. But then again, I look back on my floor plan. And I had this back door here, which we can't see obviously, but that could be a nice orange little pop. You know, like thinking about this, 
So I basically did this with it. this yeah it's kind of graphically nice from the street I think so there we go fun little architectural sketch so just to recap how we, we did with our sketch today Elon says orange orange car in the driveway I think if I had done a different perspective I might be would have put a car in the driveway but it's a little bit of an odd perspective to get it in there and it would feel like it would block the house. But to recap what we did, you know, first thing I started off with was just doing some, some line exercises, just warming up, getting some straight lines. Architecture, you wanna do some nice, nice lines for it. And then I did this just quick block, uh, two point perspective exercise. Again, just warming up Saturday morning, letting the, the coffee do its magic while uh, just doing this quick warm-up sketch. Then we did uh, this quick plan view and elevation. So we had some kind of a, a sense of what the sketch was gonna take form as. And then I really, really roughly laid out uh, my perspective, just, just kind of getting it out on the page. And then from that rough layout, did, did an overlay. Again, I could do another lay over, overlay over this if I wanted to make it even crisper, but this would be a nice quick sketch that I could show to um, a client if I was working with a developer, along with maybe some, some nice overlays of these elevations and plan views, um, so we could kind of have a conversation about what we're doing. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining. You know, I love doing these, so it helps when people actually watch, motivates me a little bit. Um, and yeah, it's been, been fun. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday and keep checking in. Hey, Ann, thanks for joining. All right, everybody, have a good one. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Elliot.